What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Tree Talks with podcast episode number two. Today's guest is a guy that I have known for a long, long time. He's a guy that I've been in a fantasy football league with for the past decade, ten years of my life. I've gone to his grandma's house for Thanksgiving dinner. I've gone to his grandma's house for Christmas Eve dinner. This is a guy whose family is just like my family. He is Fitz's cousin and a guy that I have grown up with my entire life. He's a baseball player that just might have the opportunity to go pro. We sit down, we talk about everything from his baseball career to our little guy football league that we're on the same team with and everything in between. Ladies and gentlemen, episode two of Troop Talks with podcast guest. I'm just trying to get that eighth badge. Eighth badge, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks. Straight facts, we gon' end up in that Maybach. Maybach, speed racer on that racetrack. Racetrack, I'm just trying to get that eighth badge. Eighth badge, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks. Straight facts, we gon' end up in that Maybach. Maybach, speed racer on that racetrack. Before we uh, start this conversation, I want to give a big shout out to Heroes Next Door, Tyler Waring, who was a rapper when I was a rapper, and that was that was part of my dark days, I don't really want to talk about it, but if you go deep in the Tree Talks archives, I'm sure you can find Flow of the Free, and find my music videos, but I appreciate those guys for uh, hitting me up with an intro song, but we got Dalton in the studio, bro, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, man, how are you? Dude, I'm fantastic. I was, I was appreciative appreciative appreciated the fact that uh you came to me to be on this podcast what was uh you know what was the driving force behind that uh, man like i just i listened to a lot of podcasts online you know and i thought that it would be cool to actually sit down and kind of at least try to tell my story and kind of just get it out there i mean i do have a message that i want to give out and so i definitely hit you up and was like man if you got a spot i'm in yeah, and I'm glad to have you on as a second guest. You were the first person. I We have some guests on the way. I'm excited. We're going to have, I know for a fact, two more guests. One guy that can potentially be an alien or a human being. We're not 100% sure on that one yet. But before we get into kind of, you know, your story, your baseball career, I want to I wanna take it back. I'm talking, I'm talking, okay. throwing it way back. I've known you, I've been friends with Bryce since I was four years old. So I've known you for almost two, 20 years. So like we've yeah. we we've been fucking we've been homies for a while, mm-hmm. but I want to take you back. Before you were a baseball player, before you knew everything was figured out, let's talk about some Clearwater football, youth football, bro. <laughs> that was the LC Valley Warriors. So this is a small community. It's not huge. I mean, you got teams from like Lewiston, Clarkston, Colfax, Moscow, Soton, all those teams, and uh, we happened to be on the worst football team possible for that league. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's just one of those things, you know, like, growing up, football was just kind of like the thing, like, obviously we have the NAI World Series and stuff here, but it's just kind of like, when you're a kid, you do everything, you do all the sports, and so we ended up getting on the same team together and <laughs> playing for that year, and I mean, yeah. It... I'm, I'm telling you right now, if anybody from the Clearwater Football League is listening to this, you guys stack teams on purpose, I don't even care, they talk about how there's a Clearwater Football draft, and I'm like... I'm like, there's no way you got all this talent on one team and the, and the Warriors just get the scraps, dude. Because at least when, when we were on a team together, you know, we had you, we had a couple of other kids that were talented and, you know, could actually, were athletes. You know, you look at me and Dalton right now. Dalton, you fucking, I seen you at the wrestling tournament, dude. You were putting on those freaking, you putting on the work, dude. You're lifting weights, aren't you, dude? Trying to, man. Trying to. Gotta stay with it. Dude, I... I ain't got that commitment, but you look at that, you look at, you know, Dalton, who's an athlete, you know, he, you played receiver in little guy football, right? Yeah, receiver and quarterback a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, I think we managed to win one or two games yeah, when, when yeah. you guys were there. I think we, we won one game, and then we tied the the final game of the year up at the Kibbe Dome, <laughs> yeah, we tied dude, like 7-7 yeah. seven to seven or something for like that. For the seventh place game. Yeah, exactly, yeah, for real. Dude, that's that shit that, like... You know, when you're when you're a kid that does sports or, you know, you do sports in anything, like, you remember little things like that. Like, isn't that so crazy that we can go back and just remember we tied the Moscow Red Thrashers in the 6th and 7th place game for Clearwater football? For real, man. It's crazy to think that's, I mean, what, 3rd and, or, I mean, 5th and 6th grade, man, that's... 
Uh, that's a long time ago. And I mean, that's I'm crazy. 21 now. How old are you? Uh, I'll be 22 in like three weeks. Yeah, so, so yeah. I mean, we're grown now. Exactly. <laughs> but I remember, too, specifically one moment. I don't even remember who we played, but Ty got, a, Ty got an interception. And that was like our first turnover of the year. And I was like, oh, my God, I've never seen an interception in football, <laughs> dude. Like, I remember going in. I didn't. We didn't win a single game. We won one game in fifth grade. Didn't win a single game in sixth grade. I didn't win a single game my seventh grade year. And I remember, because it shows up on my memories every once in a while. Facebook memories can kill you, bro. Definitely. You, you ever read, you ever read like, one of your Facebook memories and be like, why did my parents let me have a Facebook in 2012? I was just looking <laughs> through my stuff, like, last week, man, and I came across a post that I posted for, like, eighth grade basketball, and I was just like, why did I even say that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and, yeah, no, dude, I get that. Dude, you look at people, dude, I fucking so... Backstory about this pop up that just happened, dude. You ever stream games on freaking like Reddit? Yeah. Don't ever click allow notifications. <laughs> you click allow notifications, you get stuff like that that oh, pops man. up, dude. But um, God, where where are we at with that conversation? Oh, Facebook memories. Yeah, dude. If you think like Facebook today is like cringy, dude, like. I'll have things pop up like, like the status for a rate, or like, send me a message and I'll post the number and answer your questions, dude. And I was like, why did I have to use the XD face so much, dude? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, man. Like, I try, I definitely try to stay really low key on social media now, but yeah. I mean, I look back through some of the memories and like stuff like that, and I'm just, man. I can't believe that, but like, we, everybody show up to the 7th grade basketball <laughs> game. We want as many people here possible. And it's like, man. You're like, I'm just, trying to fill the seats. Yeah, <laughs> like, 7th grade basketball, we're going to fill the whole gym. Like, don't. So, I definitely am really mellow on social media now. I don't post a whole lot. Man, not a whole lot of pictures. Just kind of follow the people that I like to put some, like, motivational and successful stuff in the head. And that's about it. One specific Facebook memory that pops up for me every now and then, it was 2013, it was in 8th grade when we won a game, and I was like, this is the first football game I've won since 5th grade, so (laughs) 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 we gotta put a lot of respect on your 6th grade class for getting us that freaking win in 5th and 6th grade. Definitely not me, man. I was just kind of there. Looking back on it, man, football wasn't really my thing, you know, like... I kind of did it just to kind of hang out with the with the buddies and like obviously my dad was one of the coaches on the Clearwater Football League but it was just never like a focus it was just kind of like I showed up and had a good time and then the older I got the more it was just like yeah this isn't really my thing yeah so I mean what kind of got you to the point where you decided baseball was going to be your sport because I know you were you were a three sport guy right football baseball and you wrestled a little bit when you were little and basketball those were your sports what kind of made baseball the sport for you you think yeah so I mean wrestling kind of obviously as you know I did wrestle a little bit um I wrestled for about eight or nine years growing up so that was kind of like the focus when I was younger was it was all of just wrestling and I mean it was it took up a lot of my time and then I can't really pick out a moment but it was like as the years kind of went on and I started to get older, it was like baseball started to take over more of like, I would be in wrestling season, but I wanted to play baseball. Yeah. And it wasn't the other way around. Like when baseball season came around, I, there was never another focus. It was always wrestling. And so I dropped wrestling um, after junior high, so seventh and eighth grade, um, picked up basketball, um, played basketball and baseball through high school and I gave up football around junior high too so I went from basically playing five sports in junior high to playing two in high school I think that's kind of how it works though I think in junior high that's when you kind of have to if you're an athlete at least you know you got to try every sport put your hand in every basket and kind of figure out you know what it is that you want to do what was what was wrestling? Because you know, I was a wrestler in high school. You know, mm-hmm. things like that. What? Why do you like wrestling so much? Why was that kind of your focus at first before baseball? I think it was more the fact of like I got in it before I could even like realize what was going on. You know, like I started when I was five, and so, I mean, the first time that I actually remember doing something athletically was it was wrestling. Like I just remember going to tournaments every Saturday. 
and going to practice three times a week, you know, and like that was kind of like the only thing that I remembered. And so I just kind of like stuck with it, you know, like I just kind of thought it was just a thing. And so then, I mean, obviously, like I said, the older I got, the more I realized that I wasn't loving wrestling as the years went on as much as I loved to just go out and play baseball. Like that was just kind of my thing. So when was when was it that you decided that you know baseball was your sport? What year was that that you decided this is the sport I want to go like collegially? I want to you know have an opportunity to go pro, which you know we'll get into in a little bit. But when was that moment that you just did baseball? Was that just in college? You think, or what uh, was what was that? I I think it was a little bit kind of in high school, really. Like I never really. Like, in junior high, obviously, it was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to go to college and I want to play sports, but it was never, like, baseball specifically. Um, I think it kind of hit me my sophomore summer, so going into my junior year, I was playing on a summer team here in Lewiston, and I pitched in a game, and after the game, the LC State coach at the time, Jeremiah Robbins, came up to me and said that he had liked what he saw and that... As long as I kind of kept developing, he, w- he would want to watch me and then um, said that I'd have some good things coming uh, around my senior year. And so that was kind of when it finally hit me like, hey, I can do this, you know, like this is like this can be a thing. And so, I mean, yeah, that's kind of when like the collegiate mindset started, I guess, and just kind of went from there. It just kind of like built on itself along the years. So you were... You've played baseball your whole entire life, kind of like wrestling. Mm-hmm. Was pitcher always the position you wanted to play, or what were you what were you playing? You know, in between those years. Yeah, I mean, pitcher was always the focus. Like that was kind of like the spot that I liked the most. I played outfield quite a bit, um, and then I played first base when I was younger. So I played outfield all through high school. That was kind of my second position, because obviously, like as a pitcher, you can only throw once every five days, and so it was either you sit the bench for the rest of the week or you'd find another spot and so I played outfield man I was uh played center and left through high school and then pitched every week or whatever however that figured out in high school so let's take it back to high school I remember specifically my junior year your senior year that Lewiston baseball team was legit I remember that was the team at least from what I was hearing because you know I was I was a nerd in high school, so during the spring, I was a you know sports reporter for the Bengals per dude. I held it down. Yeah, um, that was the team that was supposed to do it all, you know. And you guys won a lot of games. I think you guys won your district right that yep. year. Uh, you know what was the what went wrong at state? You know what was the because you guys got to what the semis? Yeah, yeah, man. It was. Uh, I'm trying to, I got to remember now because we did it. So because I remember my sophomore year. Um, I, I was pulled up to varsity and we went to state um, and I, I think we won one game down there and then my junior year we went down and we took second in state and then my senior year we took third and so yeah man it was it was kind of crazy I know both my junior and senior year I got hurt both years down at state um, just kind of like a freak thing I mean I was just plagued with injuries through high school and so I believe my senior year, we were down there, man, we uh, won the first game, and then it came out, and in the second game that we were playing to get to the finals, because there's only three games in the baseball state championship, um, we were up by four, and I was pitching, and came out in the sixth inning, and started to warm up, and just didn't feel right, man. I was spiking fastballs, throwing them up the backstop, and I was just like, man, this is this isn't good and so threw a couple more and then I started to feel a little bit of pain down here in my elbow and I was like all right we're gonna give it one more pitch and if that's it then it's it and I threw and man it was I don't really remember a whole lot I just remember that it hurt quite a bit and so I called my coach out told him that I'm done like I can't finish and so he brought in um, one of our position players at the time and then it just kind of I think it was more of a shock for everybody else, you know, because, I mean, we were rolling up 4-0, and everybody had the mindset, like, we're going to the finals, like, it's over. And then we brought a position player in, and everybody was just kind of shocked, man. And, I mean, the other team, they just jumped on it. They scored five in the bottom of the sixth. We came up in the top of the seventh and couldn't score, and then they ended up winning 5-4. That was That's tough, man, because, you know, 
I don't care what anybody says. High school sports, unless you win, like, a national championship in college, like, high school sports is the most, like, emotional, <clears throat> emotionally investing sport. Because I remember my senior year in wrestling, I went to state, and I was one match away from placing my senior year. And I was going into that match, and we had seven kids going into the second day that also had a chance to place. And I watched six of them lose back to back to back to back, dude. And I'm telling you, like, that is... When you say, like, everybody was shocked in that game when you came out, because obviously, you know, you were one of the studs back then, that's a real thing. Like, when I was the, la I was the last person out of all of them to step on the mat, and that, that, that messes with your head. Like, I don't care. Like, you don't know who your opponent is. You don't know how good he is. But when you see, like, all your teammates fall... Like, that's a big deal. And I think, you know, that that's probably something that happened, you know, when you when you ended up going out and, you you know, you couldn't finish the game. But, I mean, it was better for you probably to come out, you know, when you were hurt than it was, you know, if you were throwing all these crazy pitches at the time. Yeah, I mean, it's just I've always tried to, like I said, I've been plagued with quite a bit of injuries throughout my baseball career, obviously, and we can get to it a little bit more in depth, but... It was just kind of one of those things, like, I wasn't ever going to push it because, I mean, worst case scenario, you tear that ligament and you have surgery. And I was like, at the time, I was like, I'm not about to do this. Like, I'm just going to let it go, you know? And, I mean, like I said, props to the other team down there. Man, they jumped on it, and we were just kind of a little caught off guard. And, I mean, they did what it, they did. I, mean, I have a couple buddies from Wenatchee that played – on the Lake City team that was down at State the same year. And they we still talk about it to this day, about how how crazy it would have been if we would have ended up making the finals and then it would have been both Idaho teams, or Northern Idaho teams playing against each other. But, I mean, yeah, it, it happens, man. Things happen for a reason. So when you talk about how you were played with injuries, you know, what kind of go back with all that, obviously. You know, it's not, it wasn't just your senior year, and I – I could be wrong, but I think it happened a little bit in your collegiate career. Um, what were what were those injuries, and uh, what what do you th what went on with those? Yeah, man, it was crazy. So it actually started back when I was like twelve years old, man. I remember pitching in an all star game when I was twelve, and uh, there's a there's a ligament in your elbow that allows you to throw a baseball, and it's the shortened term they just call it a UCL, basically. And so when I was twelve, I had strained that, which put me out a couple months and like it, I was little I was like whatever it's no big deal you know just go move on play the next sport and forget about it so I did that um and then rolling around to my junior year of high school uh did the same thing strain strain that ligament again um and then that summer had some shoulder problems and then my senior year of high school down at the state tournament uh, that was actually a muscle that lays over the UCL. I had strained that muscle and it was all just little, like nothing major, you know, like just muscle strains and stuff, but it's still, I mean, as a baseball player, it takes you out a couple months because there's a lot of force that goes into those muscles and ligaments while you're pitching. And so there was that. And then my freshman year at LC, um, basically had the start of a bone fracture, it never fully got to that point, but the start of a bone fracture in my elbow. And then my sophomore year in the fall, right before I left to go to Wenatchee, I strained my uh, labrum in my shoulder. And so it was, I mean, it was crazy. Like I remember going through all the years and it was like, okay, like it was just kind of became a normal thing. Like, okay, it hurt again. It's hurt. I went to physical therapy all the time. I mean, talk with my parents they're like well what do you want to do I'm like baseball was still the number one thing and so it was like it was there was never a doubt that I was going to quit and then I finally got to Wenatchee it'd be about two years ago now um got to Wenatchee had a full year where I was healthy man everything felt good I was pumped and uh had my first healthy year since my sophomore year of high school pitched decent and then my second year at Wenatchee, which was this last year, same scenario, really good in the fall, arm felt good. And then first game out in the spring, I actually tore that ligament in my elbow and had to get surgery on it this last May. 
damn, dude, that that's some things to go through. I mean, it's the it's like the same injury, you know, and that <clears throat> and you're and you're majoring in uh, physical physical therapy, uh, kinesiology. I, yeah, that was the, kind of the plan uh, when I was younger. It's actually elementary education now, oh, really? so I, w- I do want to be a teacher after my baseball stuff's over. But I've definitely been in physical therapy enough that I <laughs> I could I might I could switch over if that teaching doesn't work out. So, um, man, you know, now it's kind of, it's a downer. Let's go back, let's go back to like some happy things here. So you talked about the LC coach, you know, talking to you after your sophomore year, you know, what, as a sophomore in high school and, you know, people listening to this, if you're from Jacksonville, one of the biggest things in this Valley is the NAIA world series. And I say this very often, you know, as I've worked for, you know, newspapers, you know, news stations, and now I'm, you know, a news editor, I talk about how I really think, like, you put the top-tier NAIA team, they could probably go out and beat, like, an NCAA Division One team. Like, this is, like, the NAIA World Series is really a great, you know, showing of baseball talent. You know, what was what was it like to have LC, who's arguably the biggest powerhouse in NAIA baseball history, and, you know, Robbins, who's a great coach as well for uh, LC? What was it like, you know, as a sophomore to have him come to you and say, hey, I like what you got, you know, I'd like to see you play and uh, develop as a senior? It was crazy, man. Like, I at first I didn't really believe it. Like, I remember he came out onto the field because at the time we play our summers at LC. And so he was out, like, doing some field work and we talked and um, it was kind of, like, surreal. Like, I just kind of stood there and kind of, like, looked around, like, did that really just happen and then I remember going home and talking with my parents and I mean like you said man it's such a big thing here in Lewiston that it's if you play baseball in the valley that's like that was the dream growing up you know you would go to the world series you'd run around as a little kid you'd get your baseball signed by all these teams you know and LC was like I mean they were you were they were viewed as professional baseball players you know like they were just role models and so I was stoked, man. I was all about it. And then growing up, just like that was the goal. And then my senior year came around and they finally, we talked. I went down and threw for them one night and they said, yeah, like you can come be a part of our team and signed the letter of intent. And then it was kind of over from there. It was crazy. What was... You were probably over the moon with that, you know, explain like your feeling when you signed that letter of intent, you know, when it was announced that you were going to be part of, you know, LC Baseball's program, you know, what was, what was going through your mind at that time? Man, it, that's a hard one. It was like, <laughs> literally, it was just, I can't even really explain it, man, if I'm being 100% honest with you. Like, it was one of those things, you know. It felt like your work meant something. Yeah, because yeah. like, I never really viewed me playing baseball past college like that was never like in like obviously like you would say that as a kid but like realistically it was never like within view and so when I signed the letter of intent to go to college there it was like that's it like I made it I did what I said I wanted to do like I wanted to play at LC I I did it and so I mean obviously it didn't play out the way that I would have loved it to play out but I mean, yeah, it was the, you can't really describe it. It's like you're think about, especially like for the football players, man. Like if you have your favorite football team of all time, give you a scholarship or give you an offer to come play for them. That's what that's like. And it was, it's crazy. So uh, what other teams did you have offers from uh, coming out of high school? If any, not many, man. Not many. Uh, so when Atchee Valley College, the team that I ended up transferring to after my first year, they had offered me the same summer um, that Coach Robbins did at LC. And then my senior year of high school, I went down to Arizona, uh, actually the day after the Golden Throne basketball game. Went down to Arizona for the weekend because it was Martin Luther King weekend. We had that Monday off school. And I played in a a perfect game tournament with a team from Oregon and we went down there and played against a bunch of people that were like division one pro prospects you know like any kind of college recruits so I went down there and played and uh was coming off a of rehab I pitched in one game um and pitched really well and then I had a couple of schools text me it was like hey 
where are you thinking about going to college? But by that time, it was already January of my senior year. And I had, just, I had to tell him, I'm like, look, like I'm already getting ready to make a decision. Like I wish I would have done this earlier. So I only had two coming out of high school. And it didn't really bother me much. Like I didn't read Well, yeah, when you get an offer from LC, I mean, exactly. that's, that, 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 that's what you want. Were, exactly. Were, were any of them NCAA schools or were they all NAI schools? Um, so... There, LC is obviously the NAI, Wenatchee is the junior college, and then I had a couple junior colleges down in Arizona that had texted me, um, but like I said, it was nothing too serious there, and then I think the only the only one I can really remember is Portland State, uh, mm-hmm. their Division One, but like I said, it was more of like a, hey, what do you think, and then I just let them know, like, I'm a little too far along in my recruiting process, like, if this would have been a year before, then I would have been all about it, but... But yeah, you already signed that. So we kind of we've we've talked a little bit about you know your college journey through injuries. You know, kind of take us through that whole journey. You know, from when you first came to LC, we already know the injuries and like all your transfer, you know, histories. You know, going to Wenatchee. You know, kind of talk about how all that you know went through. Yeah, it's so my freshman year, I ended up redshirting at, at LC, and so I mean, for a lot of you guys, if you don't know what that is. Uh, Basically, you practice with the team, you show up to weights, you do conditioning. I mean, you're basically there. And then... I always thought red shirting would be the worst thing to do, especially like with wrestling. Like when people come out and they're like red shirt freshman dude. Wrestling workouts are no joke, bro. For real? Like, and that, and that's anything with college sports. You know what was what was red shirting like? Did you ever just get up in the morning and you're like, man, I don't I don't want to do these weights, bro. I'm not even gonna play. Well, see, like at first, that's what I thought. Like that was my <laughs> that was my whole thing at first. Like I remember we w- went through a couple weeks in the fall. And uh, then the coaches, they would, like, have meetings, and they would tell you whether or not you're going to redshirt or not. And yeah. uh, I remember them telling me that I was going to redshirt. Um, and at first, I I hated the idea of it because I'm like, all right, we've got 4, to f- 4 a.m. weights <laughs> yeah. and then conditioning after practice every day, and I'm going there, and I can't play. And so I thought it was the worst thing. But, like, the more I talked with a lot of the guys that were there, I realized, like – over 60 to 70 percent of the guys had redshirted at some point whether it was here or whether it was a junior college you know and so I started to view it as like okay I'm gonna take this year I'm gonna get bigger I'm gonna get as strong as possible I'm just gonna try to throw harder and then I'll just play my four years after that so it was more like a gap year kind of like a training mechanism I guess for me but yeah I definitely the first time I heard that I was like (laughs) I don't think so, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I really don't Did you refute to, but... it at all? No, 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 absolutely not, man. Like, I, if we were, I was at LC, I was at yeah. my dream school, they are like, you're going to redshirt a year, like, no big deal, and like I said, I wasn't, I didn't want to do that, because I just want to play, but at the same time, I'm like, alright, I can take a year if that's going to let me play four years here, like, I'll, I'll do it. And that was probably the healthiest you were in your college career. It was, I just... <laughs> it was, no, it definitely was. <laughs> So, uh, after your freshman year, what was after that? Um, so yeah, after my freshman year, I spent the fall, so the first semester at LC, we did our, um, basically our regular fall schedule. You just practice, you play against each other in scrimmages, and then in, right before everybody goes home for winter break, we have, like, individual meetings, and the coaches, same kind of situation, they let you know, hey, you're either a starter or you're on the brink of breaking the starting lineup, or you're going to redshirt, or you're just going to go. And at this time, it was like three or four weeks into me straining my labrum, so I hadn't thrown. I missed like the last two practices, or scrimmages. Um, And so I met with the coach. We talked. He was like, look, like you've been hurt quite a bit for a majority of the time that you've been at LC. And so he said it's going to be hard for us to get you playing time because we haven't really seen what you have. And I mean, I was like, yeah, I get it. I understand. Um, and my mindset was still to stay, you know, and then he kind of threw out the option, like, so you can stay or we can get you transferred somewhere to a different college so you can get some innings and then you can try to come back. And so he kind of left me with it. Obviously, I'm from Lewiston, so he stayed over winter break, and he's like, if you have any questions, just ask. Talked about it with my family, and I actually planned on staying for the longest time. I was like, no, I'm going to stay and do it. 
and I remember Jan or December 27th, so two days after Christmas, I get a phone call from Bo Kearns, who at the time was my literally my role model growing up. He played at LC, was the World Series MVP yeah, he's, his senior year. He's a legend. He's a legend. Right yeah, here. and yeah. he played uh, independent baseball professionally and for a little bit. And he gives me a call, and I hadn't talked to him for years. And I'm like, what's going on? And he said that he had heard that um, I had been debating on leaving LC or staying. And he said that there was a spot that opened up at Wenatchee, and he wanted me to come pitch for him. And so I took a day or two to think about it, talked to my parents. I was like, when do I need to know? He said, classes start January 3rd, so you need to be here in four days. And so <laughs> that's that's a thing to be hit with. And now and and from what I know, at least a little bit, Wenatchee's kind of not necessarily like a feeder system to L C, but I know that a lot of guys from L C kinda of go to Wenatchee. Is are they connected at all? Is that something that is true or what would what would you explain that as? Uh I think it was more it's more based on just like the coaching staff. So yeah. I don't really know if it's a feeder system because we do have a lot of guys that go um, to a bunch of different schools. I know, like, my first year at Wenatchee, we had a guy go to Old Dominion, which is Division I, um, Virginia Tech, West yeah. Virginia. Like, we had a uh, University of Washington. Like, we've had a lot of, like, D1 kids. But our head coach was actually, he pitched at LCSC when Coach Ed Sheff was there. Um, obviously, Bo Kearns was the NAI MVP there at LC. And then his brother coached as well. So there was a lot of, it was a Lewiston... Like centered, yeah, loose and centered coaching staff, I in a sense, and so, I mean, I remember going to Wenatchee, and that was kind of the game plan was like you're gonna throw one year here or two, and then you're gonna go back. That was always like the mindset, and then after the first year, it, the mindset kind of started to shift a little bit more. So, what was the years like at Wenatchee, and like when did you make that official decision that that's what you were gonna do, and what was the conversation with uh, your coach at LC? Like, what was that conversation like? Uh, so, yeah, so I got the phone call on the 27th of December, um, I made the decision, like, the 29th, and I had to be there, uh, January 1st, so it was literally, like, within, like, a span of four days, um, I remember going down and talking to the coach, letting him know, like, hey, I really appreciate everything that you guys have done, you know, um, but right now, like, I need to develop more as a player, and try to get back here and I, I made it very adamant that I wanted to come back and that I wasn't leaving because I couldn't handle it so I mean he was super cool with it he was like look I get it like you got to do what's best for you and like we'll be watching and that's kind of how it was man and then I packed up all my stuff said goodbye to the family not a whole lot of my friends knew what was going on you yeah. know like got a couple messages after winter break like where are you at and i'm yeah. like well i, I did out i'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm in yeah, Wenatchee, you know Wenatchee. so um it was interesting man and i i'm thankful that Wenatchee, the guys there a lot of them i mean they welcomed me like just kind of like somebody else you know like i wasn't like just a new guy and we were a month out of our season and so everybody's like all right here we go you know and they just kind of slid me in there and it was it was nice. It was an easy transition. Well, was was part of your thoughts, you know, when they, you know, because you've, you've talked about how you wanted to stay at LC, this is your dream school, was part of, you know, your decision-making process, you know, the year before you redshirted, and now you're realizing, I'm probably not going to play this year. Playing time was your number one concern, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, especially going into my sophomore year, you know, like I spent a whole my whole first year not getting to play. And then, obviously, after your redshirt year, you have four straight years to play, you know? Like, you can't skip. I mean, obviously, unless you get hurt for the whole year, you can't... There's not another year that you can add in there. And so, I mean, after the fall and I realized, like, hey, like, you're probably not going to play much. And the coach said that. I was like, okay, like, if college baseball and, like, anything beyond that is really what I want to do, I have to play and I have to get... You have to get innings and developed enough to where you can go anywhere and play. And so that was definitely a concern mm -hmm. moving from LC to Wenatchee. So what was your first year at Wenatchee like? It was interesting, man. I'd never lived on my own before. 
until I remember I moved. Uh, it's what, a trip, dude. It when, is when you because you know you. We we both have very supportive parents, you know. Mm-hmm. Shouts out to your parents. Shouts out to my parents. Known them for a long time, you know. When when you kind of live with them for a while and they're like supporting your dreams, you know. My parents were very similar to yours. They did that, and then you know you decide one day. You know, with you it was different. For you, you know, you're like, fuck, I can go pro and play baseball. For me, it was like, I just I'm tired of living off my parents, you know. So like when you when you finally get out on your own, I mean that's a trip and a half. Yeah, and. Honestly, realistically, like even like the the professional baseball thing, that's not even that wasn't even a focus really. Like I never really thought you loved about baseball. it. That was like the... I just loved to play baseball, and like I never really even had that vision of professional baseball in my head at that time. It was more or less like I just want to play college baseball and have the chance to actually play at LC. Like that was still the mindset, and so I remember driving over to Wenatchee. Um, and then one of my buddies that I went to high school with, Logan Chase, he was playing baseball over there at the time too. And he called me and said, hey, I heard you're coming over here. Do you have a place to stay? And I realized like, oh boy, I don't have a place to stay. Like, <laughs> I, I got to like, figure this out. You know? yeah, I was just going to stay in my like, truck. You know? like, I hadn't even registered for classes yet, dude. Like, I, sh- I straight up, I applied for the school, registered for classes and paid tuition all at 8 a.m., the morning of classes starting so like i did all that and then went to my first class at nine like it was it was crazy but um so he offered me a place to stay logan did um tell tell to logan too he's a great guy he is man and i i love that man to death he definitely helped me out so moved into the place there they had a three-bedroom apartment or like a house um and there was four of them living in there already it was logan and his uh fiance at the time and then two other players on the team. So I actually moved in, slept on the couch for four months or three months. And then as soon as the weather got nicer and started getting warmer, I actually moved a bed out to the garage and threw a heater in there. And I slept in the garage for the next couple of months till I went home for the summer. So <laughs> it was an interesting it was interesting because I had never, like I said, never lived on my own before, and then I just kind of got thrown out. I was sleeping on the couch at somebody's house, you know, like going to school, doing all this baseball thing, and it was interesting, man. It was a, it was an experience in itself. So coming into the season, how was the season? It was, it that was also I would say, like I said, interesting was a is a good word to describe it. Uh, when actually. The last couple of years before that hadn't had a good record. I think they were like four and thirty four or something the year before, you know, so it was kinda of like one of those we don't know what we're what we have yet. And we had a bunch of a, a lot of really good talent. Like I said, we had a lot of D one guys come out of that year. Um I kinda of slid in as our number two slash three pitcher. Um our number one guy ended up going division one. Um we ended up going twenty three and twenty three, so it was the the best record that Wenatchee had had in uh, quite a while since um, actually Bo Kearns played there. Um, but it was fun, man. Like I said, it was fun. Just kind of a new a new situation to be in, like all new guys, uh, kind of like a f- clean start, you know. And I mean, like I said, lift in the morning, go to school, practice in the afternoon. Just kind of do that, do that grind again, I guess, and actually have a chance to play. It was, it was fun. When you were out there on the field, how, how were your numbers? How were you feeling? You know, what was that like? It was, it was all right. Uh, it was kind of, it was funny. I remember my first start. Um, it was actually our first doubleheader of the whole season. I actually got to start the second game, and um, I remember warming up in the bullpen, and Bo, who was our pitching coach. He kind of comes up to me and he said, "Are you nervous?" And I said, "Yeah, a little, <laughs> a little bit." And he said, "Why are you nervous?" And I said, "Because you guys just threw me out here in my first game. I haven't thrown against live hitters in two years because I had been hurt and then redshirted." And he was like, "What'd you just say?" And I said, "I haven't thrown live in two years." And he was just like, "I didn't know that." <laughs> and then just goes, "Well, good luck. Go get him." Yeah. And just threw me out there, you know. And so that's a moment. Yeah, it was kind of like, it was it was fun, but at the same time, I was I was definitely nervous because I didn't know what to expect. Um, my numbers on the year weren't amazing. I was like six and four, I believe, or it's a winning five record, and though. five, something somewhere on there. Yeah. And I 
my earned run average was like 4.6. So it wasn't crazy, um, but I had a lot of strikeouts compared to the innings that I pitched, and so that was kind of what kept me above and like kept me starting, I guess, because I definitely walked a lot of guys, definitely gave up more runs than I wanted. But like I said, it was kind of just getting back into the groove. All right, and then uh, you're number three. You're not. Is that what you're in now, or what year are you in right now? So when I go back to college this year um, in August, I'll be in my junior year. Your so junior I'll be year. in my third year. Yep. So and then uh, is it LC or Wenatchee you're going to? Uh, I'm undecided actually. So I graduated from Wenatchee with my AA um, this last spring. So I had Congrats surgery. On that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's definitely a accomplishment i yeah, guess I, I, especially with my mom being a teacher she's, you know that's peop, a big thing people always talk about like student athletes you know especially in football because you know now you can go i think i think as early as your is it still junior senior in football i thought Jun- it was I junior thought, year in football and then freshman in basketball yeah yeah that's what you know because like you see these athletes and you know they don't get their degree but i mean going out there getting it you know your aa at least i mean that's that's an accomplishment in itself you know bigger in baseball so mm-hmm. big congrats to that so thank you so what did you get? You know, a call from LC to be able to come back, or what was you know what's what's going on right now? Um, it's like I said, it's kind of uh, I haven't made a decision on where I'm going yet. Uh, there has been some talks with some schools. Um, I've haven't officially talked to the LC coaches. I know that they've contacted my coach at Wenatchee a couple times before I had my surgery. Um, saying that they would like to have a meeting and have me throw with them and stuff. But um, other than that, I've had a couple NAI schools, you know. Um, I've been talking with them, had a couple Division two schools as well, but I'm definitely trying to hold off. I'm not supposed to be throwing until March, and so I'm trying to hold back until I have a better understanding of where I'm going to be pitching-wise before I make a decision. So looking at this Wenatchee team now, you said you know they have a lot of D one guys. Um, if you go back to Wenatchee, what you know would you expect them to have you know an even better season than the season prior, or what are you what are you looking at from Wenatchee's standpoint? Um, it's I don't like I said, man. I don't uh, I don't really know because I haven't really spent a whole lot of time over there with the guys. You know, so my first year there, we had like I said, we had a couple Division one guys go. And then my second year there, we had uh, one guy go Division One. I. I had a lot of other guys go NAI um, Division Two as well. Um, and so with me being done over there, I still go back. I still visit some of the guys that I played with last year. You know, I've got a really good buddy. Um, his name is Kenny over there in Wenatchee. He lets me stay over his place whenever I come through. Um, so I've been I've been around the practices a couple times, seen the guys. They look solid, man. They got. They got some good guys over there. They got a lot of guys coming up that redshirted last year or pitched minimum innings last year that's going to make an impact. So I could see him, I mean, I could see him having a pretty good record, you know, and really pushing for that playoff spot. So obviously, you know, you've gone through a lot and, you know, everybody's kind of heard all of the things that you've gone through. You know, what is the goal for Dalton Stamper at the end of the day? Once you get out of college baseball, you know, is. Is, you know, going pro something that is in your sights right now? You know, getting drafted, trying to go through the farm system, something like that? Or is are you more focused on, like, your degree at this point, being an elementary school teacher? What 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 is the goal for you? Uh, I mean, obviously the goal is to play professional baseball. Um, like I kind of said that, I didn't really have that in a focus sense until, honestly, this last year, my second year at Wenatchee, I really sat down with some of the coaches and was like, hey, like, I... I think I can do this, you know, and they're like, I think you can too, you know, and so that's kind of, obviously before the surgery, that was the mindset, and even now for me personally, that's definitely something that I want to do, um, obviously there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, and I got to get back on the field and put up some numbers and kind of do all that thing, but yeah, man, professional baseball would definitely be a blast, um, definitely want to try to give back to my family especially I know, like we talked about before like our families are very similar in the fact of like they support us through everything you know yeah. and so i mean anything i can do and i know especially with baseball now baseball players and the pros make a lot of money and so 
it's nothing personal. I would never, I'm not doing it just for the money personally, but I definitely want to help my family out and give back to them for spending a lot of their time and money on me for doing, like pushing me and sending me places. Yeah, and I mean, both our parent, uh, you know, our parents, our families can attest. You know, and and your family's like my family too, in a sense, where they they'd go to every game, mm-hmm. they go to every match, and you were a baseball player and I was a wrestler. We need to get back to them simply for the fact that baseball and wrestling are the most boring sports to watch live. <laughs> so <laughs> that's so, true. So spending yeah. all that time watching, and you know, especially you know, be, you know, baseball is just a long game. At least you know you're out there playing every now and again. Dude, I just want to make money off of YouTube so my parents can make some money off of watching nine hour wrestling tournaments and watching me go to and out. So I definitely <laughs> I definitely, you know, feel you with giving back to your parents I and mean, your family and I think that's a good thing. And it's just a lot of a lot of time that they've yeah. taken out too. Like I know, especially like with me having the surgery, man, it's been it's been crazy, man. It's been a like at, right now, Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, we go down and we do our my throwing program and I mean, they work all day. They come home. As soon as I get off work, they're like, all right, you ready to do this? You know? And so it's like they take a lot of time out of their days to help me out. And, I mean, I I thank them for everything because there's no way there's no way I'd be able to do this rehab by myself. You know, it's a lot of, like I said, a lot of physical time that they take out, but there's a lot of, like, it helps me a lot mentally wise too. Cause I mean, this is a tough thing, man. It's, I don't, it's hard to people say, well, you just had surgery. Like it's, it can't be that bad, you know, like even though it's a major surgery, but it's been Recovery. very, it's yeah. been mentally taxing man. these last eight months that I've had it. It's been, it's been crazy. So I definitely thank my family a lot for being there for me, like to talk or like if I get frustrated, you know, I can just kind of vent with them and, they're they're cool with it you know obviously we butt heads sometimes if i get over the top with it and i'm just really frustrated but in the end they're monday wednesday friday we're there throwing my dad's there catching my mom's opening the gym you know and i mean i can't thank them enough you know and people need to realize with injuries that like that is a real thing and especially for somebody that has like the drive the dedication that you have to the sport of baseball like when you get hurt like that, you can get a major surgery. There's things you can't do that you really would like to do. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of connected, you know, with me is with my seizures and stuff. Like I can't drive anywhere I want cuz I can't drive for 6 months because of that. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's like, you know, with injuries with everything, like there's so many things you have to give up in order to make yourself better. So I mean, I I agree with that. I think that that's something that a lot of people, you know, sitting on the couch don't realize with these athletes is that, like, it's a recovering process. You know, most of these people haven't played a sport. Most of these people haven't gone through the physical therapy that, you know, you've gone through and you've experienced. So, I mean, my hat's off to you for, you know, still having this goal, still being able to get up every day, do this, you know. And like I said, this boy's thick. You can't see him right now. He might in the thumbnail. We take a picture, but this boy's putting on those pounds. He's working out every day. Um, you know, we talk about, uh, before this podcast started, you know, you kind of had an overall message for the people, you know, what is that overall message you're trying to spread to people that have, you know, not necessarily professional sports goals, but, you know, just goals in general, like, and they go through this terrain of injuries or things not going their way. Uh, what is your overall message that you would like to spread? Just that everything happens for a reason, for real. Like, I remember... My parents and my grandparents telling me that growing up and I never truly believed it you know it's kind of like one of those things like that's just a saying you know yeah but man now these last eight months man it's really been a pillar to my recovery you know and I mean right here on my surgery I covered it over and it says for I know the plans for you that before I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, you know? And I was going to ask you about that tattoo, but I didn't want to look like an idiot if it didn't relate to your story. No, it, so. it does, man. And uh, I got the baseball stitches over the scar, and I got the date that I had surgery. And, I mean, I got that verse right there because, I mean, it is. It's Everything happens for a reason. Like, I, I had a crazy, crazy story happen, man. I had surgery, and I was over visiting my old elementary school teacher's um, 
right before the NAI World I'm Series. I'm very surprised that there are still teachers at Orchards that you used to have. Because yeah. when I went for just graduation, there was only like two. So yeah, I'm very surprised by that. So I did, uh, I actually helped out some teachers in high school and stuff, doing like teacher aid and stuff. And so I went back to see her and I tried planning it to go the day before the NAI teams came, you know, because at the time I was like, I don't want to be that awkward kid that's there with all the baseball players. And they're like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, well, I'm not playing, you know. Yeah. And so I tried to plan it to go the day before. Well, obviously I planned wrong and I showed up the same day. And I remember talking with this teacher that I had and all of a sudden, out of the blue, out of the corner of my eye, I see this, this baseball player for Faulkner University and he's like on the complete other side of the playground and he takes off on a dead run straight to me and i was i was in my brace and like you know kind of down in the dumps you know whatever mm-hmm. and he comes up to me and he says hey like did you have tommy john and i was like yeah i did and um he lifts up his right arm like this and you can see the same exact scar on his right arm and he said i had tommy john too and he said they told me I was never going to play, so I didn't do any rehab or nothing. And then he said, six months ago, I picked up a baseball for the first time, threw it, and my arm felt amazing. So he said, I started grinding and working, and he said, now I get to play for Faulkner. And so he asked me to, if he could pull me off to the side and pray with me a little bit. We did that, and then it was almost like he was just gone. Like I turned around to talk to my teacher. She turned around to me. And then I was going to introduce him to her, and he just wasn't there anymore. Like, he was on the back, on the other side of the playground again. And it was just, like, it really hit me, like, damn, like, it, everything happens for a reason. Like, I wasn't planning on showing up the same day as these guys. He ends up coming up to me, has the same story as me. And it really, like I said, we talk every, almost all the time now, and we still talk about that day, and... It's crazy, but definitely everything, like I said, everything happens for a reason, whether it's in life, baseball, family, you know, you break up with your girlfriend, whatever, family member passes away, or somebody gets sick, or an accident happens, or even something good, you know, it happens for a reason, like it's not made up, it's not just a saying, but it it physically happens. And I think that's a good message for the people, and I try, I try spreading the same thing, I mean, you know, you have... All these things that go on in your life, whether good, whether bad, like, there's a plan for you. It just determines on how you execute that plan. With you, you took that in stride, and then you realized, hey, I have an opportunity to do some things. I have an opportunity to come back and be better than ever, and now your vision is completely changed. People that don't succeed are the people that have those things looking at them right in the face and they sit there the whole time woe is me i can't you know get over this like i'm just gonna you know give up on everything exactly the the best part about living is having a strong mind and being able to overcome the things that you go through and be able to make it to the next step and i think that that's that's a good message that you're trying to spread exactly man. and just i mean don't ignore the signs and that's what i mean it's just plain and simple like you can't you can't push back against that kind of stuff because the more you push back against that kind of stuff the more signs that god's going to show you hey you need to go this way this is your path so just i mean don't fight it man just go with it go with the flow like i didn't want to have surgery i didn't want to go through all of this but in the end it was like okay we're gonna do it and there's gonna be a reason why it happened and whether i come back and baseball is still in view and like i can still play then that's what it was meant to do but if i come back and my arm's not healthy or i can't throw like i used to then baseball was never the never the main stage and i think that's a good way to leave off this podcast however uh everything does happen for a reason so do you think that uh after your second place finish in big pete's house a munch do you think that means you're destined for bigger things in that league or or do you think you're back to the bottom where you belong oh stop i hope so man i hope it's i hope it's big shout out to shout out to jason mcmahon for uh giving me christian mccaffrey (laughs) number three overall instead of d hop you know but 
Man, Connor, he just... I don't understand. Dude, I swear, every year in that fantasy league, the team with the most mediocre team always wins and always wins the most. It's yeah. like, because Connor's team never blew me out of the water. Like, it was never a team I looked at was like, that's an undefeated team. But he just, he did Man. the damn thing. And then I faced him in the semis, dude, and I was set. I was like, I'm going to the championship. I'm going to beat whoever it is. Right, and I play right. Connor, and he puts up 160 points. And I'm like, how do I compete with that? Yeah, you can't, man. He got, he had a good draft, man. Obviously, Lamar Jackson was the mainstay yeah. there. But all of his guys, man, just 20 plus every week. And he just never slowed down. Like, I thought I had him, I thought I had him in the finale, too, you know, and uh obviously derrick henry took a fat zero because he was injured that yeah. week and i mean even if i would have put some subs in i still wouldn't have won i would have yeah. had to drop derrick henry and pick up the backup running back for tennessee to even tie him you know yeah. so i mean shout out to him man that was my highest finish in big Pete's, you know so I know, definitely. that's why I said go back to the bottom where you belong, no, bro. You, you you always in the 8th or the 10th range. You, no. you come, dude, if we were giving awards out for Big Pete, you'd be the comeback player of the year, bro. Yeah, come back <laughs> from, from number 8 to number 2, you know. And so we're going to... We're going to do some research this offseason, you know. <laughs> In between we're, your freaking surgeries and your baseball we're not, grinds. We're not going to take Baker Mayfield no more. We're <laughs> yeah. going to stick with Russell Wilson, you know, and uh, try to pick up McCaffrey again. And, we're we're we'll win it. We're gonna take it, especially now that we got a trophy. We got something to something to shoot for. So I, I, I and I and I gotta say too, you know, shouts out to JJ. He's been on the channel numer numerous amounts of time. Obviously, your cousin. He puts together everything. He's the commissioner of the league. And love the guy to death. Will always be one of my best friends. But how good did it feel? It was like the Patriots and the Alabama of Big Pete's House of Munch, dude. When he finally went down, dude. No, for real, man. <laughs> for real, we talked about it. Um, we talked about it from literally since week one. I remember week one, like we both. He put up 156 and lost because I put up 160. And I mean, we talked, and he missed the playoffs. Yeah. Barely, but he, like we talked about, if he would have had one of those two weeks where he would have won, he made it in. But it feels nice, man, because he's <laughs> been running the ship for the three The Nick Saban and Bill years. Belichick of Big Pete's, dude. He is, but no, like you said, man, shout out to shout out to him. He does, I mean, he runs everything. He does, throws it all online. I mean, he runs the group chats. He runs the fantasy football, you know, he does it all around his work schedule too you know he runs the paper in the morning and dude one of the things that before before like you and connor got into the league dude this league's been going on for like since i was 10 years old mm -hmm. dude it's crazy before that like before we we didn't even do it online like he'd keep stats on pen and paper and he'd just like write all the stuff down and and post it on the internet mm -hmm. and, and that just reminds me of another guy that you guys are close with duke Yep. Dude, that guy, yep. that guy puts in the work with those football pools yeah, and everything, and you know. I like you said, Jamin, he does he does it all, man. He helps Duke with the polls and yeah. uh, like you said, he works all the time trying to get the fantasy football the way that it should be run and I mean, obviously, we know we we all get frustrated oh, and dude. we we have fights and it's not a fantasy league whatever, if you don't have fights. Exactly, but I mean, in the end, like he's the one that's made this whole league, and I mean, he's kind of set it up the way that he wants it to be set up. And uh, props to him, man. He works, especially around his work schedules and stuff like that. He does a lot for me and Connor as well as everybody else in the league. I mean, yeah, he's he's done some things for me, like giving me rides places mm -hmm. when you know I can't drive, but. You know, just to get some insight, because, you know, it's, what, January, the Super Bowl hasn't even happened yet. Mm -hmm. If you have the number one overall pick this year, who are you snatching up? Ooh. No, number one. Are you talking fantasy, or are you talking, fantasy, oh, bro. man, it's got to be Christian McCaffrey, man. You, you think so, dude? It's got to be. I guess in a PPR, because we are PPR. Yeah, so, we're yeah. PPR, so it's got to, it's either him, it can't be, I mean, I guess it could be Saquon now that Eli Manning's retired, but. Dude, you know somebody, what? Somebody, who was it, Wyatt took Saquon first this year? No, that like, was a bust. He had a yeah. decent year, but I think after this year, there's no reason why you can't, unless it's going to be Derrick Henry. It's one of those that's, two, and, that's I, and I ended up having, I ended up getting lucky and having both this year, but. I would if I had the number one pick, I would take Christian McCaffrey, and then right after that, man, I think I'm gonna start stacking up the quarterbacks again and trying to run the quarterback table. 
I, I think because, you know, Christian McCaffrey in a PPR, I think that one's obvious. I, mm-hmm. You know, but I like Derrick Henry next year, dude. Like, he he's, he's like one of the first Heisman winners that have, like, actually done something in the NFL. Like, exactly, yeah. yeah. And I had him last year, but I only threw him in as a flex. Uh, didn't really think too much of him. And so this year when the draft came around, I saw him, and I'm like, why not, you know? Yeah. Like, I was going to try to obviously trade around my my two other quarterbacks that i drafted to try to get some running backs but man it ended up working out and it just got unlucky so i gotta ask before you know we cap off this podcast chargers guy through and through yeah philip rivers Oof. he's moving out yeah moving shop philip rivers has been the quarterback of that team since you've been a fan yep uh, what what is your thoughts on him leaving the team? Uh, and you know, I guess overall, what he did for the organization. You upset about that? Are you sad to see him go, or are you happy for a new future in San? Uh, well, not San Diego anymore, Los Angeles. Uh, I think a little bit of both. You know, like obviously sad to see him go. Like he's been, besides Antonio Gates, you know, he's been like the pillar to the Chargers. You know, like after LT retired, it was like who was on the Chargers, and it was just Philip Rivers. Like that was the guy. Um, but I don't know, man, he's going to go and he'll do, I mean, whatever he's going to do with whatever team he decides to, to go with. I'm hopefully looking that the Chargers will draft a quarterback this year. Um, if, if not, then we'll just kind of have to go with it, you know, whether it's free agency or whether it's trading some pieces and moving some pieces around. But man, I don't know. I'd love to see, I'd love to see the Chargers get a get trevor lawrence next year not this year but next year um if there's a quarterback this year you're you're looking at because obviously burrow's off the board that guy's yeah. going number one are you, are you looking at tua herbert are you looking at any guys uh, this year i think herbert's probably would be the guy if they decide to to pull the trigger on one this year i know uh her or not herbert um two is gonna probably go to miami you know that's been yeah. the big hype train there and obviously burrow's gonna be number one so i could i could see the chargers sliding in and snagging herbert but um I don't know, man. I I could I could definitely see them uh, trying to trying to tank or do something similar to that to try to take Trevor Lawrence next year. But I think it's going to be a race for Trevor Lawrence next year. I think there's going to be a lot of teams. Like... I think so, man. He's good. He's good. I would, I especially with the Bengals getting Joe Burrow. I mean, they're obviously going to be out. If the Dolphins take Tua. They'll be out as well. So. I mean, other than that, there's not a whole lot of, of teams that need a quarterback. And, I mean, obviously New England's going to need to step up and take one sooner or later. The Chargers need one now, you know. Um, so it'll be – it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I had a – you know, and this is how you know I'm big on football. I had a whole ass dream today that the Patriots traded up and took Tua. And, <laughs> and, and the Jags were in the AFC Championship game. We played the Patriots again, and we won. And I was crying in my dream, and it felt so real. And then I just woke up to reality. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's like, yeah. that's the one thing I want. You know, you want to go play pro baseball, make a lot of money, give back to your family. I just want to see the gar- freaking Gardner Minshew let Jaguars win the Super Bowl, bro. Well, I'll take Gardner Minshew on the Chargers, <laughs> yeah, baby. Dude. You guys got him or Nick Foles. I'll take Gardner Minshew on the Chargers. I ain't taking Nick Foles, bro. You can take Nick Foles from uh, that's fine with me, man. Like, we just need a guy right now, so we'll see, man. I think Melvin Gordon is going to be an interesting decision, especially with Eckler being producing as much as he did this year. I think there's going to be some friction there, so one of them is going to end up going. Um, so I could definitely see them trading one of those pieces off for a big-time name somewhere. All right, man. Hey, it was good to talk to you here for like an hour, you know, get your story out. I think that was something important. Uh, we might have, you know, Dalton's a guy that, you know, wants to do some podcasts. So you might, this might not be the last you uh, hear from him again over here on Troop Talks, or maybe he'll have his own YouTube channel. You know, where can people follow your journey at? What, what are your social medias? Oh, man, I got a uh, Twitter. I uh, do- usually don't post a whole lot on Twitter, man. Uh, Instagram's usually the one where you'll see me post a lot of my stuff, you know, working out, um, kind of anything with my buddies over in Wenatchee snowboard and stuff like that. Uh, just Dalton Stamper on, on Instagram, uh, Dalton Stamper seven on Twitter, you know, just kind of send some stuff through if you want. Um, or just follow me, man. We got some big things cooking up here in the next couple of months. I get to go to Canada in May to play summer baseball and then kind of the college journey after that. All right. Shout out to Dalton for coming through the podcast. Shout out to y'all. If you spent 
the hour listening to it. It was a great podcast, great episode. I love having the guy in the studio. Again, he's like family to me, so I appreciate it. Make sure, if you haven't already, you can check all the links down below. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trayvon Pixley. And most importantly, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon. we got big things coming over here on Troop Talks. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I'm just trying to get that eighth batch. Eighth batch, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks. Straight facts, we gon' end up in that Maybach. Maybach, speed racer on that racetrack. Racetrack, I'm just trying to get that eighth batch. Eighth batch, flamethrower, how we blaze tracks. Straight facts, we gon' end up in that Maybach. Maybach, speed racer on that